Hello, I'm Dr. Timothy J. Orr, Associate Professor of History at Old Dominion University. On behalf of the Hampton Roads Naval Museum, I'm out here at Claremont Cemetery in Claremont, Virginia. I'm standing alongside one of the rarest of U.S. Navy memorials, the grave site of a dive bomber pilot who participated in the Battle of Midway and lived to tell his story. I'm at the final resting place of Captain Ed Anderson. Edward Lee Anderson was born on September 22, 1914 in Claremont, Virginia. He attended the local high school and after graduating, he enlisted in the United States Navy. For two years, he served aboard a Northampton class cruiser, USS Chester, but in 1934, he received an appointment to the U.S. Naval Academy, graduating from there on June 2, 1938. Among other activities, he played on the football team, he sang in the glee club, and he served on the Christmas card committee. He commissioned as ensign and served on a variety of surface ships, including USS Leary, a Wikes class destroyer, and the light cruiser USS Brooklyn. In September 1940, he commenced flight training at NAS Pensacola and at the fighter base at Opelika, Florida, earning his wings in April 1941. In May, he reported to USS Enterprise, a Yorktown-class aircraft carrier that was immediately redeployed to Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Anderson served in Bombing Squadron 6, a dive bombing unit equipped with the Douglas SVD Dauntless. After six months of training in the waters near Hawaii, Anderson's squadron went to war when the Japanese combined fleet attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. In fact, Anderson's squadron was flying into Pearl Harbor that very day. As fate would have it, he was scheduled to accompany that mission, but at the last minute, another pilot, one who was eager to see his wife in Honolulu, asked to switch places with him. Anderson agreed, and he stayed on board the carrier. The other pilot, Ensign Manny Gonzalez, went on the patrol and was shot down by Japanese aircraft. He was the very first U.S. naval aviator killed during the Pacific War, and Anderson, by switching places with him, had lived. Anderson made the most of this quirk of fate, fighting back against the Japanese in some of the war's earliest battles. On February 1, 1942, USS Enterprise retaliated by launching an airstrike against the Marshall Islands, a Japanese base in the Central Pacific. During that raid, Anderson dropped a bomb atop an enemy tanker at Kwajalein Anchorage. Thus, he dropped one of the first U.S. bombs of the Pacific War. Later that month, after being promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Junior Grade, Anderson participated in two additional attacks against Japanese-held bases, striking Wake Island on February 24th and Marcus Island on March 4th. Then on June 4th, 1942, he participated in one of the most pivotal engagements of the Pacific War, the Battle of Midway. During that battle, Anderson accompanied a flight of 32 dive bombers led by Lieutenant Commander Clarence Wade McCluskey. Launched off the deck of Enterprise early in the morning, Anderson accompanied the other dive bombers at an altitude of 15,000 feet, searching for an elusive Japanese carrier force. After an exhaustive search, at 10 a.m., McCluskey's group spotted two enemy carriers, Akagi and Kaga, both of which had been responsible for the destruction of Pearl Harbor some six months earlier. At 10.20, following behind a long string of diving aircraft, Anderson attacked Kaga. It is uncertain if he hit his target because the first planes in the dive smashed the carrier so thoroughly that it sent up a huge pillar of smoke that very little could be seen from the air. But in any event, Anderson released his ordnance into the wrecked ship, pulled up, and tried to head for home. On his way back, a Japanese fighter plane attacked his SBD, riddling the wings and rear cockpit. Anderson's gunner, radioman second class James Stewart Mason, was wounded in the face and legs. Mason fired away eight cans of ammunition, and eventually the Japanese fighter pilot gave up his pursuit. Mason's face was covered with blood, so much that he could not even see through his goggles. When Anderson finally returned to Enterprise, during his recognition approach, jittery anti-aircraft gunners opened fire on his plane. Luckily, they missed it and ceased fire when they finally realized he was friendly. To get his gunner to sickbay as quick as possible, Anderson issued an emergency landing request. The bridge gave him the go-ahead, and he made it onto the deck with only a cupful of fuel remaining. 
He was the last dive bomber pilot to return to Enterprise that morning. Of 32 SBDs launched, only 14 had made it back. Years later, Anderson considered himself, in his words, a very lucky young man. Later that month, Anderson returned to the United States to become the chief flight instructor at NES Daytona Beach. While stationed there, he received recognition for his services. In November, he received the Navy Cross for his service at Midway, as well as an Air Medal with two additional stars for his performance at the Marshalls and at Wake and Marcus Island. In January 1944, he returned to the Pacific when he assumed command of Bombing Squadron 80, which was assigned to the Essex-class aircraft carrier USS Ticonderoga. Anderson participated in nearly all of Ticonderoga's strike missions, but his most memorable event came on November 13, 1944, when he led a 22-plane strike against a Japanese light cruiser, the Kiso, which was anchored off Cavite. Among many aircraft, Anderson scored a direct hit with his 1,000-pound bomb. For this action, Anderson later received the Distinguished Flying Cross. After the war, Anderson held a variety of positions, serving as an Air Intelligence Officer in the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations and as Navigator and Air Officer on USS Midway. He also served on the staff of Allied Forces Southern Europe, as executive officer of USS Forrestal, as commanding officer of USS Franklin D. Roosevelt, and on the joint staff of Continental Air Defense Command. He retired from the Navy in 1968 at the rank of captain. Edward Lee Anderson died on February 10, 1998, at age 83. The Battle of Midway was an epic moment when the tide of World War II history was turned by just a handful of daring U.S. naval aviators. One of them was Captain Ed Anderson. I'm Timothy Orr. Thanks for watching.